Courage is very important. Like a muscle, it is strengthened by use. Ruth Gordon. Oh, snap. What's tea, girls? You've just tuned in to Broken Women Win podcast, discovering purpose in Christ beyond our ramshackle past. I am none other than your hope dealer, Ashley Williams, coming to snatch you out of the trenches of despair. So sit back, grab a snack, get something to drink, because honey, we've got a lot to discuss. What's poppin', good people? This is 2019, honey, yes, and you are listening to the first interview of the new year. Hey, my homegirl is about to spit some knowledge. Her husband is about to drop these jewels. And to be honest with you, I don't have much else to say, so let's just jump into the interview, shall we? Enjoy. We have some extra special guests. It's like, yes, my family, my extended family. And I wanted to bring them on to share this wisdom with y'all. And we are going to be talking about, I don't look like what I've been through. Hello. Because I know I don't. Because if I look like what I've been through, baby, who is this will be somewhere under the dumpster. Okay, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you. They're going to tell you about their ministry and what they got going on. But I'm so excited about this interview. And, uh, yeah, they're going to drop some nuggets. So tell the people who you are. Uh, my name is Tristan Wright. And I'm Nicole Wright. And we're the Wrights. And um, we uh, represent Uncommonly Kingdom Ministries and uh, the Right Way Marriage Ministry. Um, you can check us out on Facebook, on the um, Uncommonly Kingdom. And on YouTube and on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Uncommonly Kingdom. Um, we have been together with about 14, 14 years. years. Yeah. 14 Ooh. years, yeah. <laughs> and we definitely don't look like what well, we've been through. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I'm so excited, y'all. They got some wisdom. Listen here. These folks, they love Jesus, okay? They're down to earth. You know, they, they're not the couple that's so heavenly minded that they ain't no earthly good. Understand what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. So, you know, I'm, I'm linked to them um, in so many different ways. But, you know, I don't have nobody on here that's going to be spewing venom. But uh, I really do appreciate them and our relationship and you know because we've gone through some things together we had to climb up some mountains and out of some pits honey we had to wash ourselves clean jesus yes <laughs> we have as we've had to wash ourselves clean so uh yeah so cookie and at least but i well i call her cookie okay i don't know what y'all can call her what you want but i that's how i know i know it's being cookie okay so tell us a little bit more about uncommonly kingdom well, Uncomfortable the Kingdom is actually a ministry that God gave to me in my sleep, believe it or not. Wow. I was sleeping one I rolled over, still asleep, and I told Tristan to write it down. This is what God just spoke to me. But Uncommonly Kingdom is um, our ministry. We like to reach people that um, are outside of the walls of church. Church, so... Um, now it's gotten to the point where it's cliche and we just are real people mm-hmm. in real situations, living real life. And we want to connect with those people that feel the same way, that don't feel like they can go in and can be completely naked. We right. are out to reach those people. Right. right. We're, just, right. We're, we're trying to be a uh, non-judgmental part of church. Mm-hmm. And, you Absolutely. Know, we have, you know, people that come across as, as judgmental. We come out of the same situation that you came in and some of the situation that you're probably still in. We're just working through right right and that's an awesome thing too because you know that's a lot of the reason why people won't come to church is because people will not be transparent and i like to say that i I keep it hot i keep it honest open and transparent okay if you don't want no truth don't ask me because i'm gonna give it to you all right i'm gonna let you know exactly what happened don't ask me for no details because if you do i'm gonna give it to you and everybody can't handle that (laughs) right (laughs) everybody can't handle that i'm like how many details you want baby so everybody can't handle that but um you know uncommonly kingdom reminds me so much of broken women win because you know broken women win is also for those people nine times out of ten they don't even go to church you know and so god told me a long time ago the people that you are called to the sector of folks you're called to they've been hurt by church they don't go to church so you you know you're gonna have to get out there and get them and i'm like well i can't just go get everybody god how am i gonna do this and then that's how you know the podcast was birthed 
so you know our ministries can go places that we can't our books that we write they can go places that we can't so we our feet may never actually hit the ground of where those individuals are we may never actually meet them face to face but we do know that the ministries that God has placed within us it can reach them yeah it can reach them so the whole um i don't look like where i've been you know what i've been through give us a little bit of a of your testimony as much as you want to tell because we keep it hot on here well do you want um the before or uh <laughs> <laughs> the before, you, know? <laughs> you know god blessed me to even though i've been through the trenches and, and things were real ugly before him he blessed me with a beautiful husband and um it's been quite the journey. We we got together what, within a year. We got married. We got married within a year. We got married. We had a baby. Yeah. All within a year. And um, the first what, what? ten years, <laughs> it was rough. It was um, we've been through garnishments. Mm -hmm. We've been through trying to figure out where we was gonna live. Um, we've even been in places where we had mushrooms growing up in the house. Okay. My God. Um, God has just <laughs> blessed, us. blessed us a whole lot. We don't look to get places that um, had gifts and we were trying to use our gifts and they were corrupted. Um, we've just, we've been through a whole lot. And we, we say now that we're not trying to coach anybody through anything that we haven't already been through. We've been through the treasures. We've been through the in-laws. We've been through the fight. And the only thing we haven't been through is the infidelity. But you know, we're trying to stay from that place. <laughs> right, right. And but you know what though? And that listen, let me tell you something. Yeah, I do know that y'all have mm -hmm. been through some stuff. I know the testimony, okay? I'm talking about I'm talking about when Tristan was DJing at the chat's house, okay? Oh, oh, I listen. <laughs> listen, God is just a redeemer. He is awesome. He is amazing. And for y'all to even be standing and where you are, and I see the growth too. Y'all have just like oh my god y'all have blossomed so i mean the last pass let's see how long ago how how long has it been let's how, seven years dang it's been that long you know what you're right because listen when i when i started going there i was pregnant with austin and austin just turned five so yeah so that's exactly how long it's been but look y'all have just god has just done a 180 in y'all's lives things have just turned around and i just I, I can see the growth and it's amazing you know when you get under you know proper leadership when you get somewhere where you're actually being fed and you can be watered and you know it says that one man plants one man waters and then god gets the increase and yeah you know and it's always been something you know there but it's man listen y'all done hit the mother load y'all done tapped into it you there now <laughs> like you are there now so what was it like um what was like what was it like growing up each one of y'all was it did you grow up in a household well, well, where my, you were church uh, my upbringing was kind of uh kind of kind of kind of it wasn't i wouldn't say rough it was just that i didn't have a father figure in my life and um the only father figure that i had was my grandfather but only uh reckon this, uh thing i could really pull from was that he worked all the time right. and that's all i really knew about it i really i don't think i knew that it was that he worked and he took care of home he never did nothing outside that i knew of so uh i just knew he took care of home he took care of my grandparents my, my, my grandmother and my mother you know i knew that but growing up that's all i knew and being in that just being in that single basically a single parent because he drove trucks mm -hmm. and so um i i I'd seen that but then also i seen uh with my mother and my stepfather i, I watched my mother get uh beat the, you know domestic violence um, I had to grow up watching that till yeah. I was about maybe 10 and um, just seeing that, you know, make you uh, change as a person on the inside. You know, you don't like to see uh, people done wrong or harm being brought to people because of that. Right. And um, thankfully, God, you know, I had a praying grandmother that didn't let me turn to that because a lot of people pull from that and feel like that's how it's supposed to be. But um, I had a praying grandmother that, that showed me that, hey, this is this is not right. This is wrong. This is not what you're supposed to do. They also taught me how to uh, take care of a woman, um, taught me how to be a gentleman, how to open car doors. And that you do fine. now. That you do now because I'm telling you, listen, <laughs> so, as long as I've been you know, knowing them, that's what he's been doing. Yeah. 
Right, right. And um, I just, you know, I just didn't have no, uh, I didn't really have a whole lot. Well, we did have a little bit of what we had to, uh, well, it was a lot of us staying in one, one little three-bedroom trailer. Um, but um, that was by choice because I didn't have to. I could live with my grandmother, but I, you know, stayed with my brothers and sisters because we had different fathers. But um, I, it was by choice that I lived with them. But um, I, I was brought up doing hard work out there in the field, you know, <laughs> having to go out there and cut grass and, you know, cut two acres of land with a push mower. Oh, child. You know, um, <laughs> uh, I had to go pick greens and peas and watermelons out the field. You know, I was taught all those things. So, like breaking leaves. Like right now, I'm on the I'm on the fridge right now because my grandma probably gonna get me because I ain't been out there to break her leaves. <laughs> right. Up her leaves right now. You know, but but yeah, I I, I had a, a pretty uh, a value uh, led um, upbringing. I really didn't have too much. Uh, tumultuous times besides the domestic violence right like, well let it God hang right cook it <laughs> God brought him to be light in my life because uh my upbringing was horrible um both of my parents were addicts um i was molested at the age of four um by a woman um so that brought on a whole bunch of extra stuff right um uh, I was very promiscuous because I didn't know what I wanted, who I wanted, how to feel. Um, by the age of 19, I was addicted to drugs. It's been many times I woke up and didn't even know how I got there. Um, but God has continued to save my life. Um, I remember I was selling drugs and my sister came and got me and she told me it was on a Friday morning. She said, come on, get up. We're going to go. And I said, I'm not going nowhere. She made me pack all of my things and said we had to go. That Monday morning, the police busted the house that I was living in and everybody in there went to jail. Wow. Um, it is, it, it, it's so much that has happened over my life. I was born deaf. Um, I didn't get hearing until I was six years old. What? Um, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it has just been thing after thing after thing. And because of my promiscuous background, I had some things to happen where they said I never have children. But God turned that thing around too. So, um, it ain't even enough room in the space of time right. for me to tell people how good God has been to me over and over and over again. He has shown himself faithful um, in my life because if it had not been for him, I really don't know where I would be because of the places and the positions um, that I put myself in. But his grace covered me. Listen, um, I'm telling you. It, it covered me. I had a mother that was um, highly addicted to alcohol. I raised myself. Um, even though I had older sisters and brothers, they went on and did what they wanted to do. I have one sister that tried to look out for me. But you know, when you're in a bad situation, you kind of like you know, I do what I want to do. You can't tell me what to do. And there was a lot of situations that I was supposed to be dead. Um, I remember <laughs> being in the car with these guys. I was 12 years old and they were 17. And he turned the car around on the interstate. And I saw cars coming at me. And I don't know what happened, but when I opened my eyes, we were back the right way. Um, God has just been good to me. I don't deserve all that he has done for me. Um... I tried crack cocaine um, and I didn't get addicted. I don't know how many people can say that. But... I don't know, not one. <laughs> not one, honey. That was uh, the Lord. It was free based cocaine. It's the same thing as crack. Okay. It was free based cocaine, but I was so caught up in because from my foundation, I didn't know who I was because my parents weren't who they were supposed to be at the time. Um, my foundation was cracked and I always wanted to be liked, I wanted to be loved I wanted to be just accepted and so I put myself into a lot of situations that I shouldn't but God knew it was all for now because yes. everything that I've been through everything that has been poured on me I can now pour out into other people right right and that's and that's so awesome that's so awesome that you are you know you're open with telling telling your testimony because people 
like to say oh I've been there done that you know got a t-shirt for it but they won't tell you what the that was there you go you know and a lot of times they won't tell you what that that is because they're still doing it they're caught up in it they're struggling on, on ways to get out of it or they're just plain embarrassed and they don't want anybody to know what actually happened and see and it just goes to show that you cannot count people out you can't say you know from what you see a person addicted to or struggling with just because their struggles are not your struggles you cannot say that, that, that God does not have a will for their lives you can't say oh well you know if I were you I wouldn't even deal with that certain person God has a plan in mind you hear me because here it is Tristan came from one side of the tracks and then you came from another side of the tracks and honestly like looking looking on it now if when we see people that come from opposite sides of the tracks, you know, people are like, girl, mm -mm, don't do that right there. But like you said, God brought Tristan in, you know, to be some light for you. And I mean, and look at both of y'all are operating, I mean, to full capacity in ministry. And it's an awesome and amazing thing. I mean, you still could have been stuck where you were, but you were not. And to look at the both of you, you cannot tell that either one of y'all had a, a struggle day in your life. <laughs> like you can't y'all look good like i mean listen listen you you don't look like what you you know used to be hooked on what free base what girl no you don't know but you can tell it's nothing but the glory of god that is on your life it's nothing but the glory of god so when it comes to um you know trying to pull yourself out of the trenches and you know seeking deliverance what did seeking deliverance look like for the both of y'all Mm. Well, seeking deliverance looking like for me was just basically bearing down because uh, I knew God, you know. Right. Um, it wasn't like I didn't have the background of not knowing who he was, but knowing him um, personally. Right, relationship over religion, right. Right, it was key for me. It was uh, uh, it was a couple of worship songs um, that, that brought me back that had me like down on my knee like oh you know snot nose you know right uh, you know you'd be running and you just be like god i appreciate you know i thank you you know it was just a couple of those mo key moments at, at times when i was just like i was ready to give up uh maybe even commit suicide i thought about that a few times but it, it, it goes to show that when you have that relationship with him he will bring back to your remembrance that he has never left you and he's always there for you um that's what it had, that's what it took for me it took for me to just really get down to the bare minimum or, or bare nothing just to be just me and him it had to be just me and him no, nothing else mattered just right me and him. right and when and it came so, to when it came to that was it like uh, certain things you had to like break away from um, certain situations you just had to just buckle down and say hey you know if I'm gonna really be serious about you know doing what God has called me to do and and breaking away from these things that you know are somewhat addictive I'm gonna have to stop going in a certain direction was it hard for you to turn from that, di that direction or did you just go cold turkey because you know some people they're like well I just decided to just stop and you know it doesn't bother them but me on the other end baby it was a tug of war Right, right. Um, on, on certain things, you know, some things you have to, uh, you, you can't just go cold turkey, but sometimes it, it was it was a struggle where you would go back and, and, you know, dabble in, you know, you would just go back and forth, back and forth, you know, and, and then finally you just get to the point where it was just like, okay, look. Right, because you'd be convicted. You'd be so convicted and you don't have no peace. And then you try to go right. back and dab and it make you sick. And you like, what was I even thinking? Like this, why? Right. Why did I even do that? Then what the enemy wants to do is bring condemnation on you, which you know mm -hmm. that you're not under condemnation. But that's just how it works. So even when the enemy tries to whisper to me now and be like, girl, well, you know, you are a little lonely <laughs> over there. And what you could do is such and such. And I'm like, listen, what I'm not finna do is that, okay? Right. Right. <laughs> because uh, the, the feeling of guilt the guilt that the enemy brings upon you I mean it will spiral you all the way down into a depression because you'll feel unworthy you'll feel like you know okay here I am I'm all the way back to square one and that's not what the word says you know so you have to get to a point to where you just like you know what I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna go in this direction right here so cookie deliverance for you was it hard for you to turn and go in a different direction um, yes. Did you still have some hang-ups here and there? I mean, <laughs> what yes. was it like? <laughs> because my because my lifestyle was such a lifestyle that 
how I dealt with stuff was getting high. How I dealt with stuff was drinking. How I dealt with stuff was just being out in the world. Mm. It's still a fight for me at times. Um, when things are hard or when I get in a, a depression. You know, I have those moments where if I was high, you know, I would think that I'd even gotten high, okay? And I had to cry because I was like, <laughs> I don't want to feel. Right. <laughs> Because God has delivered me from that. And I keep trying to take myself to places that he's already brought me from. Mm. So, yes, you know, I, I'm, I'm real with it at all times. Yes, I still have those moments of condemnation. Um, I let the enemy talk to me from time to time. And I have to I have to shake it up on my feet. You know, I feel like because it's such a ministry inside of me, the fight is so much harder. Like right. I tell my husband all the time, you don't understand where I came from so you can't understand this fight that I have to go through because all of the stuff that I went through the enemy does not want the glory of God to come out of there. it's so many people that can be healed can be delivered can be set free just from what I went through absolutely so, and then too he don't he don't want you to get delivered for real for real he really don't want you to because it's like and then too he's not going to bring something to you that you're not interested in like with me i don't smoke cigarettes i ain't never smoked crack you know i'll smoke some weed you know uh a while back uh, and every now and then he like child i know your nerves shot you go get you a blunt but i'd be like baby i'd be so high i'd probably be sitting on the roof somewhere looking crazy <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i start thinking like all the way through the situation i'm like lord what if, what if somebody give me some bad weed and then i'm in the middle of the interstate naked you know and folks taking pictures and all kind of crazy stuff so so, of course, the enemy is not going to tempt you with what you're not familiar with. So, right. with me, he's not going to, you know, say, hey, you know, here go this crack pipe right here. Because he know I'm going to be like, do what now? <laughs> you know, but on the other end, what he may try to do because he knows my heart and, and uh, you know, my desire, he may send uh, relationships my way, whether it be friendships, you know, because I'm just a fun loving individual anyway, whether it be friendships or, you know, um, a, a, a male to female, like an intimate relationship. Girl, you know, you ain't been touched in almost a year. You know, you've been celibate almost a year, girl. How about you just, you could just celibate, you know, you ain't got to, you know, because that's how the devil be talking. That's how he talk that's how you yeah talk, that's exactly how you talk so you have to cast down as the word says you have to cast down every vain thought and every vain imagination that exalts itself you know against the knowledge of god and mm. people don't understand that you have to pull yourself away you have to separate listen Those that, that, that pull you you got to separate yourself listen from. why are you gonna play with it you can't play with there it there was a lot of people i had to separate myself from what you say um, just in that just in that lifestyle and they didn't understand and then sometimes i didn't understand because i'm like okay so just because i'm not doing the things that i used to do you can't speak to me you can't do this but i had to let those things go because now i'm going in a different direction so right. in deliverance it, that comes up too you have to separate yourself from those things that are going to pull you in a direction that you should not go that you're trying to keep from going in right and you have to make it a uh a, it has to be a conscious decision it has to be on purpose like yep. i love god and i i dedicate my life and my every being like every fiber in my being to god on purpose i'm not a christian because i grew up in a household where you know my parents were christians because listen the jesus that you know you're taught you have to learn the actual character of that man you see what i'm saying because sometimes yeah. you know uh christ can be misrepresented and once you begin to really study the word and you get into what god's word says about you and says about his character you'd be like wait a minute okay so this is who jesus is to me he's not a beating and a condemning god no he right. is slow to wrath and he loves me unconditionally and he wants me to be set free and when i fall he's still there because the enemy wants you to think that when you slip or when you backslide as the folks at the church house like to say you know you backslide that the lord and just forgot you he just threw you away and that is not the truth the word says that he is close and he is near to the brokenhearted so when you are contrite in your spirit when you're like god i'm sorry i mean when you have a a, a repentant heart you're like god i don't know why i did that but please help me not go in this direction now it's gonna take some actual work on your end because hey if you used to hoeing he ain't just gonna come and tape your legs together 
they gonna do that. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. He not gonna be using no gorilla glue. You're gonna have to just make a conscious decision to not go places. You know, I was talking to um Carlton yesterday on our podcast interview, and we were talking about you know uh, the importance of godly connections and how you know that sometimes you know you have to make sure your surroundings, everybody that you're uh, that you're intact with, that your surroundings are actually from God. Because if you got people that's whispering in your ear saying, "Girl, ain't nobody gonna know." You way in Huntsville. Who gonna know what you doing? Don't nobody come to your house. Your kids go to bed early. Who gonna know? But mm -mm. in my head, I'm like, nah, boo. I'm not gonna risk my superpowers because I feel like my superpowers in Christ right now, <laughs> they are really oh, intact. Man, I like how you put that. Yes, I'm not gonna risk my superpowers because think about it. It it, it's, it kind of feels like that. You know, when you're in right standing with God, that you can go boldly to the throne, you know? But when yeah. you go and you, you walk off that path and you do what you wanna do, you feel like you can't ask with that same boldness because you know that you've been involved in things that's not pleasing to him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's how the devil worked with you. You know, you be walking around here looking crazy and then you be thinking to yourself, everybody know what I done did. Don't nobody know nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't nobody know nothing. Right, right, right. You be in church trying to lift your hands. He be like, put your nasty hands down. Yeah, yeah. And you put your hands down. You be looking like, Lord, what am I going to do? And so here it is, you know, all three of us, you know, y'all know I've been through Jesus. <laughs> a lot of stuff okay but to look at all three of us we look nothing like what we have been through but the crazy part about it is god has given us um it's like it's like he's given us a certain look to actually draw those individuals that we're supposed to go out and get so we're not called to everybody we just not. You know, and I'm fine. I ain't, I'm not for everybody. I ain't, I ain't for everybody. I'm just not. You know, it's sometimes, you know, people think I'm just a little bit too much. They think I'm too transparent. They think I tell too much. But my transparency comes from my heart because I want people to know that, listen, I've been there. I know what it's like to be the other woman. And that was a hot funky miss. Okay. I never thought that, you know, I would have been caught up, um, uh, messing around and, and dealing in, uh, what you call it? I had some homeboys that used to sell weed all the time, but I never bought the weed. So I could just smoke however much I wanted to smoke. <laughs> uh -huh. So I never I thought that I would be caught up in that. <laughs> right. So it's like, so it's like, here it is, you know, my parents are pastors, you know, I've been in church my entire life, but everybody has to build their own testimony. Everybody has to build their own testimony. And when you talk about your testimony, and your testimony is not for everybody, it's not. It ain't for everybody. And it's going to make some people uncomfortable. It's going to make some people cringe. But those that, you know, are walking through what you have gone through, you'll know when it's for them because guess what? They may not say nothing to you when you tell it, but they'll slide in your DM real quick. <laughs> and they'll be like, girl, thank you so much. You just really helped me. I'm caught up in the same thing. I didn't know that this was going on. And so, listen, God is just awesome and he is amazing. So how in the world are you and Tristan just keeping things together and being so consistent because i be seeing y'all on the book y'all y'all working people so you guys cheering yeah you know yeah. so how are you staying consistent and still pushing god's word and getting that word out there to these people like you just said it's a conscious effort it's right. a team effort it's a team effort we do it together uh one time sometimes it's me pushing her and it's other times it's her pushing me it's usually him push, pushing me being <laughs> Right. I mean, but, I mean, but, I'm, I'm the mama, you know what I'm saying? And mothers have a whole lot on them. And some days I feel like I can't um, get on. I'm just like, baby, we got to do this and I got to do that. And he was like, no, we said we're going to do this. We, we're trying to be consistent in the season. We got to go. Let's push it. And some nights before we even get on, we argue with each other. Right. <laughs> but y'all can't see that because it's not about us. It's about the people getting what they need right right, right. You know, and we I, just try to uh, you just try to be uh real and down to earth and, and transparent like you were saying because like like i said a lot of times you go you see these people on tv and they google and then people go see these people and they you don't really know what's going on in their lives but we transparent we're gonna tell you you can see us out in the streets and we're gonna have a conversation with you you want to pray you want to talk inbox us we will not you know release stuff and 
we just it's, it's that's just who we are that's just in our character we try to hold uphold what we've been given you know we've been given this gift to be able to to go through things and be able to make it out so we can help people right but, and, uh, you know just we just try to uh we just try to convey that to other people so they can understand like like you said that's like you they may not say it then like um we've been um well she has been approached more so than i have but uh, a lot of people will catch you out in the street and be like, oh, you that person that was on there. I seen that. I and appreciate that's that. accountability right there. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's another, that's another reason that we're tr- we try to stay consistent because it's people that, that's watching that you have no idea that you're helping, that you have no, like you said, your feet not going to be able to go everywhere, but that word is going out and it's reaching people. So that's another reason. That's how we push all of those many hats that we wear to the side to get done what God needs us to do. Right, right. And you know, and it's so wild because, you know, we go through situations and and um, we walk through certain things so we can come out of it and we can tell people, you know, how we came out and how we made it over. And sometimes those situations that we go through, we may have been judgmental towards other people before we actually walk through them. Because I used to be like, wait, I used to be like, who in the world want to mess with somebody's husband? Who would do that? Trifling hoes. Who would want to do that? But then when you were vulnerable and you were seduced, okay, and you was just, in, I mean, entrapped and you found yourself like, how in the world did I get here? And you had to figure out how to pull yourself out. Then you realize. So now I look at other women like, okay, I don't know the actual situation. You could have been in a very vulnerable state. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't go into, you know, uh, uh, situations of adultery or whatever you want to call it, being a side piece or whatever you want to call it. You know, they don't go into those situations saying, hey, you know, let let me make sure, you know, I do this right here so I can have this title forever. A lot of times you deal with people that have such a spirit of perversion on them. They have such a spirit of lust on them and they pry and they they um, mm-hmm. they sit in, and they wait, honey, they be waiting to pounce. <laughs> okay yeah. and then when you're at your weakest <laughs> when you're at your weakest weakest and then they pounce on you and you like oh god what just happened and then, then you have remorse behind it so you have to try to figure out how to get out of it and i had to fight my way y'all know because y'all know the, yeah. y'all know the deal so i had to fight my way out of that situation i had to just remove myself completely cut everybody off because it was just the craziest wildest piece of perversion that i had yeah. ever been in because they was trying to pass me around like a hot cake to spouses and everything i said what in the world is this here jesus but you're gonna get me out so the lord did yes you know i keep it hot okay and i know a lot of my listeners they probably didn't know that but it, now they do it's, it's just the truth so and i'm not ashamed about it i used to be so embarrassed but I'm not ashamed about it because I know what I've gone through um, in my life it is to help somebody else out so now when I'm in a in a ministry now um, when I'm dealing with people that are connected to ministry I can smell that stench that spirit of perversion from afar I can see it from afar because I'm like oh oh I seen that before Okay, oh, he just wants you to come for Bible study. No, boo, that ain't what that is. <laughs> no, no, baby, that ain't what that is. So when you've been through something, you know, just like when you were, you know, addicted to drugs or, or alcohol or whatever it was, when you've been through something, you can see it. Can't nobody pull somebody out of something that then already walked through. I'm telling you, if you've already walked through it, can't nobody pull you out better than somebody that been in it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, if if you've never had a if I've never had a strawberry before, and you say, Ashley, what does a strawberry taste like? I can only tell you what I think I know or what I've heard. But if I've been there and I've had it, then I can tell you. I mean, line for line. The okay. So when you pick it up, it's gonna feel like such and such. And when you bite into it, it's gonna feel like this. So you know, God just He allows certain things to happen in our lives um and he graces us to be covered in those situations he graces us to be poured out of those situations so we can help other people and the word says that we overcome the enemy the evil one by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony our testimonies are not made for us to keep silent our testimonies are not made for us to be embarrassed about and to keep them to ourselves they're not they're not made for that your testimonies are supposed to help bring other people over so when you see somebody that's caught up in something i'm just non-judgmental i just i'm not when i even when i see somebody homeless on the street i'm like god that's somebody baby i don't know what happened you know you don't know what happened it could have been me okay 
okay you don't know what happened so you can't look at somebody that's in something and just judge them you don't know what don't happened know. you have to pray and ask god to give you discernment on when to minister to them because every time every time is not the right time for you to minister to them because sometimes you know people they don't be receptive so you have to pray for them first and god to give you the green light as to when you're supposed to move in and minister to them right right so I'm so excited, y'all. This right here just has been, this has been through the roof for me. It has, been, it has really been through the roof. And I think a lot of people. That's for us too, because we, we, we've been watching you. I mean, um, they seeing you, you know, put your stuff out there. We're so proud of you. Oh, y'all so sweet. I love y'all. Y'all so sweet. Besides you, you know, to be able to work in the, uh, in the ministry. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, like I said, we know your story. We know, right. we know how everything started. And to see you now pushing through and still persevering through everything that you're going through, that's been through, it's, it's amazing. You know, people don't know. People don't, like like you said, when people know your story, then they see you now, they be like, wow. Right. Man, they have no clue. They don't know. know. Like, then to, be, to know you on a personal level is, 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 is better for us. Right, right, right. You know, but folks, you're right. Folks, they don't. They don't know, you know, because people don't want to tell you the, the, the ugly stuff that they've been through. I've been through some right. ugly stuff. I've been through some embarrassing situations in my life. And it's so crazy because even with some of the stuff I've been through where I could have been exposed, where the cover could have been ripped off, as the old folks say, God just covered me. And he just moved me right on, right on out of the way. He was like, no, baby, just, just disconnect it. yourself. Come on over here. Let that be. And I'm going to make sure I take care of that right there. It, it may have been some speculation when it comes to certain things, you know, but it is what it is. And I'm not ashamed. And I have been through a lot and I always want to be transparent with you know with my tribe and I tell them all the time I cannot lead you where I have not been I can't you know you want to talk about what it feels like to be divorced twice how at your girl yeah <laughs> I can talk to you about that you want to talk about being a single parent I can talk to you about that you want to talk to talk to somebody about what it's like to try to get get off some weed because you hooked on weed now I don't know I don't know but I got somebody for you though <laughs> I can point you, you know, I can point you in a in a direction, but it's just nobody but God. And I, I mean, honestly, I didn't even think that I would be on this path that I'm on now. I knew that ministry was something that God had placed within me, but I did. I knew that I wasn't just called to a pulpit, you know, and so it was hard trying to figure out what is it that I'm supposed to do. And this is ministry. This is ministry. This is ministry. And so if I'm going to be waiting on folks to come to an actual building, then, I mean, it's only a certain sector of people that I'll be able to minister to. So I'm like, God, what is it that I can do? I just want to be used at your disposal. And I finally got it. And when you finally figure out what God's called you to do, you know, you're unapologetic about your past. You know, you're okay with whatever people know. Then he'll just begin to just drop things in your spirit. He'll begin to just drop stuff in your lap. Because, I mean, think about it. Four, five years ago, we, I mean, they didn't even have Facebook Live five years ago, did they? No. No, didn't. No, they didn't. They didn't even have Facebook Look, Live. <laughs> right, right. So here it is, you know. <laughs> right. I wasn't going to be live five, five years ago. I'm Hello. Hello. <laughs> God. Thank you, Jesus. They didn't have a live five years ago. <laughs> you know, social media period was already a lot you know, five years ago, but, you know, I didn't know anything about podcasting either. And so, um, as I was going through the divorce, you know, I, I said, well, I might as well just throw myself, you know, into something else. Cause this man, well, actually it was before we went through the divorce. It was just when he just left because we had an altercation and he just left. Like when answer the phone, I mean, ghost like Casper. No, Casper was a friendly ghost. We had to call him another ghost, but he was just gone because he wasn't friendly. Okay, went answer the phone. I mean, it was like over a month with like nothing, and I'm like, oh my god, who just abandons their marriage like this? Who does that? You know? And so I was like, okay. When I figured out, you know, when he finally did call back, like nothing had ever happened. I'm like, nah, bro you know sign these papers when you're gonna be back to sign these papers and so i was like okay god what is it i want to do and i had i always wanted to do a podcast and actually i wanted to do it with him but it wasn't the season for me to do i could never just get things together but y'all when i tell y'all first of all it is so much that goes into starting a podcast oh jesus <laughs> it is so much i'm thinking about 
like putting a, a, a packet together and just doing like an online course because I've had so many people to ask me, you know, right. how do you That's start a podcast? Oh my God, it's so much stuff to do. Okay, you got to submit it to iTunes and submit it to whatever. You got to wait for their approval. It's just a lot. And so I felt like it was like day and night. I just was... I mean, I could not rest because it was on me. You know when God tell you to do something, you just ain't got no peace. Like, yeah, I had no peace. So I had to dig and figure out, you know, all this different stuff. I found out about, you know, a syndication site. You had to have a website and all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, like, we know there's a lot that's going into uh, that's, you know, I spent a lot of time, I spent a lot of time doing research and knowing how to Listen. do everything, getting everything set up, Child. getting the right body, getting the right, you know, the way what people would listen to it and look at things like that so you, it's a lot that goes into it i'm trying to tell you the topic just trying to get everything set up to make sure it look presentable to right everybody. and then you want to you sound because you you wanted to you wanted to have the spirit of excellence on it you know and right. i had some people was like well if i was you i wouldn't even try to put it on itunes you could just use this app and i'm like i'm not gonna use no no freaking app sound like i'm in a tin can so i'm like yeah so i'm like no yeah, I didn't want to use the app to sound like I was in a tin can, so I didn't do that. So I had to research them. I, I mean, I spent months researching microphones and all of the other stuff. But it, what's so crazy is, you know, a lot of times when God gives us a vision, he kind of works backwards. So I had been given the, the ministry of Broken Women Win back in like 2015. Okay, way back in 2015 was when I was given that. Yes, and so, you know, I wasn't really doing too much with it other than just writing. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, years later, fast forward, let's do the podcast. But God gave me all of the topics first before I even got the podcast together. So now that I have the podcast together, because sometimes, you know, being a mom, I'm a single mom. I don't have any family here in Huntsville. So, you know, it can get to be, you know, real busy and hectic. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to do this week? I know I need to post something this week. All I got to do is go to my notebook. Boom. There we go. Right there. Mm. <laughs> go to my notebook. And so, at, yeah. right. And I always pray and ask God to send me, um, send me people that I'm supposed to connect with for the podcast and if he says no this is not who you're supposed to have on here because like i said it's ministry and she is the pastor of uh the broken women win that's what it's like you that. <laughs> okay because <laughs> that's exactly what it's like okay i'm in, i'm pastor in this closet because that's where i record is in my closet okay <laughs> and so you know so i did that and you know god had out he had placed y'all in my spirit a long time ago but i just didn't say nothing he was like no don't say that now don't say nothing to him now and then y'all start doing the videos consistently i was like oh lord can i drop the bomb now he's like not yet <laughs> <laughs> and so and then when we connected you know we connected when we were supposed to connect and we're gonna also do um wh whenever i come back to montgomery when i have some extra time i'm gonna bring my camera because i want to actually do like a panel discussion with you guys on my youtube channel too because that's another thing that's just another form of ministry that i want to get into with that as well so but yeah i'm just really excited that y'all are doing what y'all are doing i mean because it's different it is it, it takes a level of sacrifice it takes a level of discipline like you said accountability because people when you put your face out there when you put your voice out there and you know people listen to podcasts but i've had a lot of folks chat don't even know what a podcast is they like what is that they said you do what is, what is a what now they said oh they're like oh oh okay she do a podcast but people that are like podcast junkies they like what you got a podcast man that's dope you know so but yeah i do i want to um i want to stay connected with you guys i want to link up with you guys um uh, on some yeah, merchandise man. as well yep mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all, I got a whole lot of stuff up my sleeve. I do. But before we go, I want you guys to close us out in prayer. Either one, I don't care who, y'all pick. Close us out in prayer because I always, you know, cover them and pray over them. Cookie, you know. Well, Tristan, you've listened to the podcast too. So, yeah, y'all know I always just, you know, speak a word over them before we go. Because sometimes what they hear on the podcast, that's the only prayer that they get because they're not connected to a church and they may be in turmoil at home and they're not connected to people who speak life into them they're not connected to folks who are who are hot who keep it hot who are honest open and transparent they're just not they don't have that so can you speak a word over my tribe please amen 
Well, Father God, right now, we thank you, God, for a broken man wins, God. Father God, we thank you for every person that has connected to her, God. Yes, God. And Father God, every person that is in the future that's going to connect, God. Father God, we ask right now that every word that was spoken on this podcast on today, oh God, that it will touch the hearts of those that it needs to touch, oh God. Father God, give them the strength and the understanding, God, to go through whatever it is that you have placed before them, God, and to know that it is for the next person, oh God. Father God, our testimonies are just what they are, God, testimonies yes, to give Lord. to the next person, oh God. Father God, that we will not be uh, fall in our struggles, oh God, oh God, who will make it to the next step, oh God. Father God, give them strength to go forward, God. Give them power to go forward, God. Give them endurance like never before, oh God, that as they uh, embark upon tomorrow, God, even not even tomorrow, God, but the next moment, some of us don't even feel like we can make it to the next moment, God. But God, as we go into our next moment, know that you are covering us, God, that you are keeping us, oh God. Father God, that you are giving us strength that goes beyond measure, oh God. Lord, we just thank you right now for what you're doing in each and every life that is listening, oh God. Father God, we ask that you lift them, lift each and every one of them, God, to a place that um, they can see clearly, oh God, yes, that Lord. they can have direction clearly, oh God, on what you have called them to do. Just like Broken Women Wins has gone forward and Uncommonly Kingdom, God, Father God, that they are called to somebody, God, that there's yes, a Lord. tribe for them, oh God. Father God, just creating them, God, every everything that they need, God, a clean heart to go forward, God, in all that you have called them to do, God. Send healing, God. Send deliverance right now in the name of Jesus, God. And every question, God, every pondering thought, oh God, we ask that you attend to them right now in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we thank you and we ask that they continue to go forward on this week, God. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. 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 And thank y'all so much. I love y'all tremendously. Thank y'all so much love for even too. being a guest on the podcast. I am listen y'all just make me feel like i'm it's just special because y'all came through <laughs> and i appreciate you guys i really do thank you guys so much for listening and for all of your love and support is greatly appreciated please remember to rate share comment and subscribe and if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to discuss slide in your girl's dm on instagram all of my social media platforms are Broken Women Win. That is Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also follow my blog on my website, which is BrokenWomenWin.com. Until next time, be breezy.